Good day and welcome to another edition of Insight. Uh, today we want to deal with a sensitive issue. We know it by the acronym ALS. It's a killer. It's a disease. And it has come to light because it's affected one of our reggae boys. Um, brought us much pleasure. But there's a man who went after the story, and um, he's an inner circle man. Uh, we're talking about Brian Lewis, who was a producer for that show that caught the nation's attention and, of course, broke many hearts as we looked into what on earth has happened. Where did this come from? But to get us started, I want to ask Brian, if you could just, in summation for us, tell us, remind us, for those who didn't see it, what the story was about, what, what was the approach, and why the story? Well, first, I must talk to you about trademark. Um, I don't want to say in a circle, because you said in a circle. I know there's a group by name of in a circle. <laughs> it's actually center circle. Center circle, yeah, there yeah, you yeah, go. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, well, I've been following Shelton for a long time. And when I heard about his sickness, I decided that, decided that I would be the one to take it to Jamaica, to tell Jamaica what exactly is happening to him. So from time to time, I have my conversation with, with um, the, the father, and we decided that at the appropriate time, that we would do it. But in all of that, in, in, in tracking all of this, I know that he was sick. They didn't know exactly what he was sick with. So if I got the story early, I wouldn't be sure what to say or to tell Jamaica that he was sick with. So it, it, in about July, when they knew exactly what it was, and then we spoke again. And But you know, you have to digest it as a family. You don't run to Jamaica. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, so yes. In, in digesting it and thing, and then they decided that we're going to talk and, um, All right, so what's the story about? Again, for those who didn't see, it, what was it, the story it, about? It, Pretend it, as if I didn't see this story. It, it's about um, this, 20, this 32 year old footballer, still have a lot in him, um, uh, has this disease, ALS, um, a myrotrophic mm -hmm. lateral sclerosis. Lateral sclerosis, yes. yes. <laughs> um, short, short ALS. Um, many people would know it as Lou Gehrig. As he died of it in 1941. At that time, no one knew exactly what it was. And it, it was, it's a rare disease, so they, 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 they didn't have a name for it. So it was named after him until exactly they, find, they found out and things. So he's suffering from that this disease right now. Uh, if you look it up, you'll see what it is exactly. But he's trying to fight it. He's trying to fight it, and um, plenty of people say, or everyone say, there's no cure for it. But you can't say if there's a cure or not because it has never been cured. So you never know if I may run into a cure. Yes. yes so you yes. can't say why trying. There's because, hope. Because there's hope. Yes, right? Yes, and yes. you never know. Probably it's a get up. You never yes. know. Yes. Or it's a piece of ginger. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and don't rule out marijuana, right? <laughs> exactly. Someone there is, that. Someone of course there's that. something. Yeah. I've, mm -hmm. I've done my research too. Um, what was the impact of the story like? And um, from your perspective? It, it was massive. Um, from the day the promo started running and people got aware of something, of it, and that something was wrong, everyone was waiting to see exactly and to, to listen and to watch just for themselves to say, is it really so? So <clears throat> Jamaica stood up last Thursday to, to see this program. And um, at the end of it, different reaction. Some people are glad to see it. Some people, I mean, glad in terms of knowing yes, that Yes, that was there, exposed. Right? Yes, and yes. Some people are very sad. Some people cried and still crying. Um, some people couldn't watch mm -hmm. because they said that from the promo that they, they couldn't bear to see it. Some people told me that as they started watching and they turned off the TV that they couldn't go through it. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was a major impact on people. And, um, even today, people still talking about it. Yes, well, I gather it was even being shown again this morning, and you can see it all over the world now. A um, number of other persons have picked up on it as well. And uh, yeah, our, yeah. our station here, yeah. um, the Gleaner, has also done a mm. thing, thing with it, and we have it on I, YouTube. I've got calls from overseas as well. I, yesterday, I someone from in, um, Florida called mm -hmm. to say that um, they can't believe. Yes, um, yes. Another person I spoke with told me that he landed in in Fort Lauderdale um, Thursday morning, mm -hmm. and as he reached the airport, 
the one was asking him about it. Yes, yes, because it, it, it's, it's all it over the there. place. Yeah. The, the, um, how did you get to this story? And, uh, what was a personal impact on you? As, as a friend of, of the father, um, and I know what he... And just to let people know that the father will be on this program as right. well. <laughs> yes. um, I, I'm talking to him at times. And uh, one day I was talking to him and, uh, on the phone. Um, I, 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 I can tell you, he was trying to mask it, but I could pick it up in his voice. But he was really, there was some tears, he, like he was crying. And, uh, mm -hmm. and um, that day, I, I, after coming off the phone, I, I almost said to him, later we'll talk. But mm -hmm. I stayed on and I talked to him. And when I came off the phone, I was like, I was like crying because I could feel his pain. Um, and at the same time, I was saying to myself that if he's feeling that <laughs> as, as a parent, yeah. just imagine what the, the, the person himself is feeling. Is feeling. Yes. And, and, and those who are around him would have known him from a little boy, yes. like myself. And yes. then, so it, it, was, it was hard. And then, I, 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 as I said, when I went there to do the interview, I, I went through it, but it wasn't easy going through it. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't easy doing it. Uh, I, I, maybe if it was someone else, I probably ask maybe yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. different yeah. question, more question. Yeah, yeah. But um, I, 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 I had some questions, but I didn't, I didn't yes. carry them through because yes. I didn't want to go further. And yes. then editing yes. stayed in an edit, editing suite and looking at it over and over again. Yes, um, yes. At times I said to my, I, in, in doing the program, sometimes you're looking at it and you say, is this appropriate? Is yes. will this let him look bad? Yes. yes. Yeah? And you start to think and you start to take things or you start to tweak, you start to, because you're trying, what you're trying to do, you're not trying to get a fame from something like this. Yes. Because a lot of people check that, oh, Brian, you, you get the bus, so you're mm -hmm. that's not my aim. I'm not trying to get fame from this. So I'm not going to put something to sensationalize the program because I want everybody to say, oh, yes, and that. Mm -hmm. No. What I wanted was to tell a story. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I wasn't about to put things to ridicule anyone mm -hmm. and to try to gain fame. So mm -hmm. I, as, as a person myself, I looked at it and said, how would I treat someone in my family? Yes. Yes, and that in this situation. Right. I won't I, I'll tell you about my story um, not too long from now because I've got it in my family too. Um, I will tell you my moment um, in the show that made it painful for me. And um, you and I know Mr. Shelton, I'm proud of him, so like, oh, whoa. Yeah, man, yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, I remember coming up to the sports club and we just talk about loot and yeah. and ball. <laughs> So I, I got that. <laughs> I know that. But it was when he rested his head on his mother's shoulder. And when I youth see mother cry. I feel like you want to make that that lit me for six. And if we cry on this program, it's all right. That was one of the touching moments um, because anything, when it comes to parenting and to see a child crying, and, and his, you know, you grow, yeah. you saw these things, a child crying on, on his mother's shoulder, and you see an elder, elder doing the same thing, it's, it's even more touching. Yes, and, yes. And, that, and that was very, very touching. Right? Just to see that even that the parents, are, even what they're going through, to see that the parents were there and that he could cry on their shoulder, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that says something. Mm. That, was, that was a special moment. How difficult do you think it was for the Shelton's to come and say, listen, here's our story. Come cross with fence. Come in our house. Come in our privacy. Bust down this wall. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and come learn about a disease that we don't know nothing about, we can't do nothing mm -hmm. about. The doctor them said they can't help we. Um, what, what, how difficult do you think that was for them? It wouldn't have been easy, right? It, 
talking about something that everybody is saying that it will kill is going to kill you mm -hmm. uh, it couldn't be easy to, to 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 do it but they were f facing more pressure on the street because yes. people were seeing them and pressuring them into yes. into saying up to the into, uh, yeah <laughs> trying to find out what happened what happened you know you go to go through every day every day people seeing you me you said the ball is sick me you say your son sick me you say shelter sick me. and mm -hmm. and and when people, when you, you go through that, it, it, it's more pressure because you want to say and you don't want to say, mm -hmm. right? And, and you can't go around answering everyone individually mm -hmm. because each person you, you, you tell, it, it gonna, they're going to go into this lengthy discussion and then you and the spot probably break down. So it's not easy yeah. doing that. Yeah. So to come forth as a group um, to, to do it, it, it certainly relieves a lot of stress and pressure from yes. the shoulder, yeah, because yes. it, you just put it out there and the questions answered one time and everybody know and things. So, yeah. but it wouldn't have been easy doing it, it wouldn't have cast. And Center Circle was trusted with this story. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask you the question now. What was the feedback from the family about the story? They, did you earn or did you betray their trust? No. I, I, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't betray any. As a matter of fact, I, I've, it's as if I'm a representative of the family. Yes, Because I've been are. everywhere talking on behalf of the family, not in an official position. But, yes. um, but people keep calling me for some reason. Mm -hmm. I'm still, well, I tell you what has happened, um, <laughs> my good friend Brian. It's that we are now a part of the support structure. Yeah, yeah. We have to lend our shoulders to them, because we, they're going to need some big, broad, and wide shoulders. But we'll come back and hear about Center Circle, the making of this show, and what caused all of this to come together. Because if Brian Lewis thinks that this is a big bang story, there's much more to come in life. We'll be right back on Insight. Special program looking at a special person, so Luton Shelton and the struggles of that family that uh, they will have to endure for some time yet. We're talking to the man who brought the program to us and therefore opened up the door along with the, the family so we could get an insight as to how, you know, savage this disease is and the prognosis. Um, but we want to look back at Center Circle. When did Center Circle start? Give us a little history on that, and um, because Center Circle is a vehicle, mm -hmm. so we want to know when that vehicle got going and how it picked up this passenger along the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, tell us a little bit about Center. S S Center Circle started in um, <clears throat> 2014, um, August 2014, uh, so it would be in the fourth season. Um, when I start, I started it strictly as a football program, so you won't get anything else about football. Or uh, probably a footballer talking about something, but yes. it must be yes, yeah. in the centre. Yeah, sorry. and and, and, um, and about local personnel, ah. uh, even though you may be based overseas. That's right. That's yeah. right. The yeah. local yeah. angle. Yeah, yeah. right. Yes. So, um, <laughs> so that's what it is. So, it's about getting stories to the people. It, it's not a talk shop business, mm -hmm. um, because <laughs> you know it, there's a lot of time wasting during that. You want to be to be compact. Yes. And, and, and to the point, so yeah, so, and it's um, finding those interesting stories to give to the people. And I've been doing that at times, you know, it's difficult finding the type of stories they want, but mm -hmm. programs are not easy to do, so. Yeah. Give me your, your <laughs> own history, Brian, in terms of how you got into this business. Um, I have a sense of where it, 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 it was, it, but um, give us You know, <laughs> strange yeah. ask that, but um, and I'm glad. Um, I started in media, you know, um, with the Boulevard News. Boulevard News. Yeah. Right. Um, at the time, the, bu the Boulevard was off. The <coughs> with Ico, yeah, Ben Brody. Um, and that's where I was. And um, I started this football team, TD Invaders, Turn Drive Invaders, yes. for long. And uh, Luton Shelton Senior 
was a captain. The, you <coughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the um, team here, you could have played about. Yeah, man. In the dark. I'm understanding. <laughs> and, and he could carry out instructions. He's nearby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I met young Luton at the time, and, and so I started to go to prep school matches. And this is how I got into mainstream media now. I started going to prep school matches, and one day I was listening to, I, I'm sure I can say, to IRFM. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Yes. And, and they had this program, Milo Prep School Report. Yes. And they were talking to coaches, what they would call and get their, their views and things. And I called there one day, and I, and I spoke to Robert Williams, and I said, Robert, you know I go to these matches every day? And he said, yeah. And he said, well, look, somebody to get some interviews. And I said, yeah, man. And he said, must talk to some players, talk to coaches, talk to parents, and then I started. And this is how I got into mainstream media. Yes. And I so Luther, when I see the see that I had the Jew that what one of them should get credit for that. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a vehicle to mainstream media. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. So you know, um, and what what I'm trying to get out here and to show people that um when you hear somebody come with a story a bus or you know, there's some, you see them overseas somewhere. It never started the day before. Mm. It, there is this long journey, the hard route, getting down to the, the, the soil, grounding with your brothers and sisters out there, and then it, it's a part of your development. Yeah. Part of your development. Mm. How do you see your part in terms of the progress you have made? You satisfied with it? What else you want to do? You know, Sometimes I look back at it and I said, I probably could have been two steps ahead of where I am, but I guess it's my nature of how I do things. And so I'm, I'm comfortable how I do it. Maybe not where I am, but um, how I do things. And I like, you know, a lot of people don't like the way how you do things. <laughs> I like to do things in my way. And, um, <laughs> And that's one of the reasons why, <laughs> you have to have why I show. have my own show, because <laughs> yes. I've not been told how to do it. <laughs> I do it how I want to do it. Uh, yeah, and you know that sometimes that don't, don't get you far, because yeah. be, you, you, be, there's some people like when they are being led. Yes. Yeah, yeah. and um, <laughs> so I you like to lead yourself. <laughs> yeah, I feel that if I drop over that cliff, I probably I, I will have no one to blame. Yes, 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 yeah, yes. So. yes. And so where I, do you where do you get your inspiration from? Is there somebody out there? Is there um, somebody that you look up to or to say, well, I like how they do their thing? Uh, uh, there's no one person, you know, cause you know the people say that th this is my idol. No, I never have an idol. Um, I used to just read anything sports. Mm -hmm. um, I'll watch anything sports, and and that's how I gather my experience because I I never see this. One person has saying, I want to be like this person. Um, in, in times by when, when I, everything opened up to Jamaica in terms of technology, and we were getting Sky Sports News, and I, I used to watch it a lot because they have this way of writing stories. Yes. Yeah, and, I, and then I, I always look and say, that's how I want to write stories. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want when I to tell a story. And so I, I used to pattern Sky Sports writers yeah, but not any particular one. They are yes, just listening yes. and, 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 and say, oh, yeah, I like that style. Is and it, let me, let me ask um, intuitively, if it's where the pictures tell the story. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you are not watching, if you are not watching, when, uh, for instance, when I'm watching Sky Sports, if you are not, if you're not in front of the TV, then you wouldn't get the story. Mm -hmm. you, okay. if, you, if you should get up and, and still listening, you wouldn't get the story. Okay. You'd wonder what they're talking about. Okay. Um, for instance, I told someone um, recently that I can watch local TV, uh, or I can whatever listen, watch whatever, and get the story. I can go in my kitchen and leave the TV to, and and listen it from where I am. I know exactly what the story is about <laughs> because it, it's not be, it's not words. colored. Yeah, it's not <laughs> colored, so I can I can listen because you're gonna tell me that people are gathered in front of this, this building and, we're, and what building it is in front of the ministry, yes. in front of the ministry yes. building, protesting with placards yes. and all that. So <laughs> right away I can stay around here and know that <laughs> people are in front of the ministry with placards <laughs> and that's what the story is about. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
So you, if you if you cut it short, you say this is what it was like this morning, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I I'm around. I want to know what it is. Yes, I would yes. have to come back and look and say, yes. oh, oh, that, oh okay. yeah. As opposed to <laughs> they gather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Without saying, we yeah, yeah, I yeah. Got that. yeah. I, as we say, I got the picture. Um, <laughs> back to the Luke and Sheldon story. Or one going to say your boyhood friend, um, and the trust that was given to you to carry this for them. How do you see it down the road in terms of? the other stories that are going to have to come from Luton. Um, as, you, as you have gotten the communities around the world to start saying, all right, he's here, but updates. Mm. If, the, if the first story was, was difficult, the updates are going to be even more difficult. Not for me, for the family. Because if things doesn't get better, then it's going to be more difficult for them to tell that story. So in, in waiting for updates, they can just imagine that you're not going to just get it like that. Mm -hmm. It's not something you just run into somebody's home and say, how oh, do you know? What the latest? Mm -hmm. Let me see him. Let mm -hmm. Jamaica, let's, yes. let's carry the camera and see him. That's no, no. Right. No, no. This is not something that you treat like that. This is not the, about running down the government for, to fix a road or something. Yes. Right? Yes. Th this is something that you have to take. Yes. Um, into consideration what it is and how you deal with it, mm -hmm. right? So don't yes. sit and say, Brian, what happened to the update? Don't hear nothing more. No, no, it's not like that. I'm not going to rush the, the shelters to say, I want to go again to do something. No, mm -hmm. that's, 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 that's not my doing and that's not all. Oh, but from time to time, I'll find out and let them know. But as to the extent of where you go and how you do it, that, that's different. Yes. Um, the expectation of the different communities that you, I hear that you have to, it has to be tempered with reality. Um, will, however, come if they want to be a part of that community? Do you run the risk of blocking them out? Mm, no, mm -mm. I don't think so. That's, that, that doesn't make any sense either. Mm -hmm. No, because this is not about one person. Right, so every, 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 whatever anyone can do to help, then you have to open the door. Yeah, yeah. I, t I tell you, um, I have had a story myself. I have a cousin who was diagnosed with ALS for the last ten years. For the past six years, he's been in a home in upstate New York. A strong boy, former soldier in the UK army, left, went to the USA to, to live, join other family members. And he has been like that for a while. It's a tough story. It's a tough story. It is like some people where they will turn off the screen mm. if they see the story. Because, but for the grace of God, I. But I believe that the greatness of the story, it brings us in for us to contemplate our own, the things we take for granted. True. What is your greatest takeaway from the story as we bring our section to a close? What is your greatest takeaway? How has this impacted you most? Because most people just don't consider the reporter. You get the job done, but how did it, I think the family need to hear from you how did it impact on you to tell this story? You know, I, I, when I walked away, I looked at it. Since Thursday, I, I've said to myself that um, you, you heard the saying about life. You have to live life um, and live it as it comes. I, I said to myself that this is what people are talking about. Mm -hmm. Live life today like it's ending tonight, mm -hmm. right? Never put off what you can do today for tomorrow. Yes. You never know what will happen in the next minute, mm -hmm. right? So I said to myself, you just have to enjoy life. You have to enjoy life. I'm sure Luton did. Mm 
in certain way because he, he was over the world and I'm sure he enjoyed the experiences. So give thanks for that side. So for those who who saying that oh it's tough, boy I'm 32. This is something that you can all look at and say, why pass a man down there and don't even look at him, don't even call to him? But you're gonna hear that he's sick or he's whatever, and you're gonna rush and say, oh yeah, me know him and yes. this, that, and all that. Yes. Right? Yes. You yeah. have to see people, respect people, and if even let a smile, hi, hello, yeah. good morning, yes. good yes. yes, yes, right? You can't go around as if you are vexed with the world. Right, see people, we are alive. Treat me as a, you see me, I am alive. Don't wait until things get bad for you to say, oh yeah, I didn't know him, you know. I made the same money. No, no, respect each other now. Yes. Yeah, respect each other now. I have my own ways of how I want to go out, you know, and talk, but I don't think I would say it here, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I want to thank you very much for um, <laughs> coming and sharing with us. Um, thank you for the story. Um, it's a story that has been in the making since you um, met him and you didn't know. You know, it's a story that uh, has been on the and, 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 yeah. and So you have been prepared for the story. But my brother, thanks. We, we understand the draining that, that, that comes from it. And um, there's much more draining to come. So, thank you for the insight. Yeah, man, thanks. Thanks for having me. Center circle. <laughs> and when is this aired again? You know, it go with your promotion, um, man. Well, everyone is asking, are you going to show it again? Are you going to? See? We'd, we'd love to see it. Some people say, I missed it. I heard of it. I want to see it again. I think I'll have it again on Thursday. I'll freshen it up a, a bit. Yes, um, yes. Yeah. What so time? At 9 p.m. Yes. Thursday at 9 p.m. Yes. All yeah. right, sir. Thank you very much. And um, we'll be right back on the Insight. When we return, we will have the senior man in the house. Welcome back to the Insight. Um, today we're dealing with the Luton Shelton story. The man afflicted with ALS and um, a lot of us now running to Google to find out what it is. Um, happily, the world doesn't have a whole lot of cases as it relates to the size of the world population. So it's not much known about it, especially in Jamaica. But there's a family, a Shelton family, who knows a lot about it. And we want to welcome the senior, Luton Shelton. Welcome, sir. Thanks for having me, Michael. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to hold strong, right? right. <laughs> so help me. <laughs> I'll try, I'll try. Um, the decision you made as a family to let people come across your firewall, come across your gate, come into your house, your bedroom and living room, to give up that privacy, what was it like? How, how did you come to this? Well, um, we're always in the football arena uh, from, from ever since. And people from Luton have been playing. You know, he was one of the most loved striker of this time. And wherever I go, the family goes, people ask him the same question. What about Luton Shelton? When there is selection, they still ask the same question. Many people thought he was away on, on, on international duties, as he normally do. I mean, on club duties. But basically, he was healing. And uh, he was healing with this illness. And by all means, family keep, tends to keep some privacy with it. Because the privacy is just to to sort out what was wrong with him. You know, we've been seeking medical attention from 2016. Mm -hmm. And um, even Brian, and I must say thanks to him also, uh, Brian Lewis, who is a producer for, for Center Circle, 
Brian has been a friend from a childhood days. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Brian has seen his growth, has been a part of his growth. You understand me? And uh, sometimes he may even ask me, and honestly, I know Brian is a friend, but sometimes I try to keep it low just to see him because yes. Brian is still media, and yes, but yes. at the same time, <laughs> I know that him respect <laughs> yes, him yes, respect yes. our privacy indeed, too because indeed. his family. And uh, I made him aware, and and I tell you, I tell you what, Brian was always aware of any development with Luther, mm -hmm. and I, I see him as a brother as also. Yeah. And so, I mean, so when we decided was to when we see that we're trying so many things and so much, people are talking, some people hear because. Sometimes come in the public eyes. Yes. And when people see him, them seem thin, look drawn, walking different. People have all kind of things saying. Yes. Well, he might have cancer, yes. one of HIV, yes, yes, all kind of different yes. things. You know, you hear all kind of uh, remarks. As I said, many times when I go to the football matches, people keep on asking, hey, you want to look at him? Not too well, but. You understand me? They thought it was his injury from his knee surgery and all of that, but it, it wasn't so. So when I sit with him and discuss with him, I say, well, Luton, we need uh, to talk to the fans. I mean, we need to share this with the fans. A lot of people out there asking everybody to keep coming to me, and coming to his mother, coming to his brother, coming to his sisters. You understand me? And no one could give a good detail. At first, I'm saying, boy, daddy, um, probably just put it in the paper. Yes, yes, yes. When I talked to him about the cameras, he was like, <laughs> no, <laughs> yes. no. You know, it's like, it was no, because probably he didn't want them to see him this way. Yes. You yes. understand me? So. Yeah, he didn't want them to see him this way. But, but I pursue him. I tell him that, listen, I think we owe it to them just to let them know. I know, I personally know that the response will be great for them because, as I said to you, uh, Luton is not the figure who in the public eyes have been in discipline. That's correct. Yeah, he's, a, correct. he's a very, very humble child. Come out, and when they depend on him, come out and do him oh, work. Oh, yes, he does. You know, <laughs> he's work. a humble child. I, it's, yes. it's, a, it's a joy to see him play. Yes, he was yes. a, I think he was a dean to play football, I yes, can tell you, yes, you know, yes. just to get back into Avery's. He's a, in conception. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When I was a child, people used to get up and say, one of a child must be a footballer <laughs> because of the love I have for the game. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to talk about love I have for the game is to, I could always be driving evil with my gears in the car. <laughs> Yes. Uh, and have done a talk, right? You know, I talk to Brian. We, we, we play football just 24-7, every yes. day. Yes, yes. We come from a f community where, <coughs> mm -hmm. sorry, mm -hmm. football is, is a passion. Yes, yes. We play football three o'clock in the morning time. Yes, yes. Well, and I tell you what, it was a love. Mm -hmm. I know when Luton was conceived, I know that to me, the first thing I've always said, my first child is going to have my name. Yes. It's yeah. going to be a great name. Yes. It's going to be a popular name. Yes. Oh, when wow. they want to be a doctor or something, but it's going to be in the public eye. Yes, yes. As yeah. that prediction. Yes. And it came true. It does. <laughs> um, you persuaded him to go public. Um, public, he wanted it controlled maybe through the newspaper, which, you know, you'd have to see me. Uh -huh. um, but at what time did he... How long did it take? And at what time did he say, all right, let's do this? All right, listen, um, he has been battling with the, a problem from 2016. And first of all, um, we thought it was just a common cold mm -hmm. in the beginning. Yeah. He had a common cold, a cough, and then his voice started to get slur. Yeah. And then uh, after the slur started to get more worsened, um, we thought we taught more or less he had a mild strokes. So he started to do some tests now. None of the testing came out conclusive. None of them at all. So therefore <coughs> you went overseas to get a lot of tests done. And most of the tests were in itself not showing anything that is within his bloodline system, 
didn't see any effect on his brain or anything like that. Um, but more and more tests have been done. And then at first, they, they thought, they knew that, they, they said that he, he was diagnosed with motor neuron disease. Mm -hmm. And uh, at first, when the result came, even the doctor was saying that, you know, please don't read upon it. Because it honestly, to read upon it is frightening. I remember the day when him, him sent me the text when him come from the doctor with a result and he said that I read this. I want to start to read it. Honestly, I broke down in tears. To have an autoimmune disease is, 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 is really frightening, very, very frightening. And if, if it can help us, it, it, it is about something inside the body, or fight the body. It's not much of something inside the body, you know. Is the neurons that is destroyed yes. within the, 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 the nerves itself. The neurons mm. is the nerves that feed within the spinal cord. And what it does, it, it literally shut down all the muscles of your body. That's what it does. And that's a situation that is internal. It doesn't affect its sensory um, uh, nerves and all of that. Mm -hmm. Because he can't understand you just anything. He can't communicate as much. Yes. But it's his motor skills that have been destroyed. Yes, yes. Um, he went public recently. Mm -hmm. What's his reaction? to the reaction? <laughs> well, I know on the day that we were doing the pro uh, the Fleming, he broke down in tears when Brian asked him, first and foremost, you know, how does it feel like that you can't play football as it is? Mm -hmm. Brian had to stop the production, literally. Seriously, he couldn't ask another question. He broke down because that was his passion. And for him to go public himself, um, I said, boy, daddy, I never know that persons were that love, love showed that much of love to me yes. with the response that just goes out in itself. He was like, it's like everybody was that concerned. There wasn't any negative reaction, mm -hmm. you know, people were, I, I mean, I don't think we have gotten any, especially even myself, I've not gotten any rest really because I have to be an answer question, <laughs> taking texts and you know, doing just about anything possible. But by all means, him, him look at it as being favorable in terms of comfort to him. Yes, yes. You understand me? It's a the matter. least we can give him is that comfort. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he went off to Miami. Just recently. When he travels to Miami, he travels alone? No, he doesn't. Uh, most of the time, good. he has a good wife, honestly. Oh, God. Yeah, she, she accompanied him most of the time. Yes. I know the previous time before now, he, uh, he went off with his kids and mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a member of the family. Mm -hmm. But to everywhere we go now. Coming back soon? He's back now. You know. He's back now, mm -hmm. back in Jamaica. Yes. Um, all right, we have got a minute to, to deal with this, um, this section. And there's so many questions to ask. The, Two children from my, or the youngest one, or the younger one, um, doesn't seem to be aware too much because she's, she's young. Is she coming to that position? Well, for Azara is the youngest, she's three, and uh, Latasha is the oldest, she's nine. You have an eight year old son also, okay. but he's living in the US. Okay. Um, when I speak to Latasha, the older one, she said to me that I understand that that is ill. But in terms of the critical part of it, I don't think she grasps it much. And then she's concerned, she's always by his side, she's always looking onto him. She assists him as much as, as possible in the home, in any form of way. We're gonna take a break and we'll be right back on Insight to talking to Luton Shelton Senior. Welcome back to Insight. We are having a discussion about Luton Shelton Jr. We're having it with Luton Shelton Sr. And it's about something we hardly know about, ALS. I'm not going to get into the, you know, the Greek name, 
means that things shutting down are not working. That's what it really means. Um, Mr. Shelton, I, I, I shared a, a quick personal story with Brian early on the show that myself, I have a cousin who has been suffering from this ailment for 10 years, six years in a, in a home. And it confirms what the book says and what you, 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 you appear to know a lot about. The doctor them don't have no cure. Um, and you said something that warmed my heart because it's the same benefit that my cousin has. He has a loving wife. To what extent has a family, and if you have not, will you, gotten the counseling that going to take you through this? It's a long, hard road. Well, for the family, we are fit. And as I say, faith moves mountain. And by all means, we have not seek professional counseling anyway, but we as a family pray together. And by all means, we believe. And as I said to him before, it shall be over. By all means, I know the doctors have been saying all kind of thing, but we are doing a lot of research. We are coming across some finding and we shall apply those findings. Far be it for one to even suggest to you that things won't work out in the glorious thing. Far be it. I'm not, not like that. But um, there's a point that I've had to reach, and um, maybe you might consider this a part of the counseling. There's a point I've had to reach in my own life when I was... Um, almost diagnosed with something that I didn't care for, but happily I, as you say, um, ducked the bullet. And when I do research, and I hope when you do it, you will see the same. When I do research, I see X amount of persons are afflicted by this, another set by this, another set by this. And we tend as human be like, ah, it's not me. And I've had to face the situation when you see your parents die and, and you, people ask why. I've had to reach the position, why not? <laughs> why not me? Why not my family member? Why not? It's a, it's a hard, it's a bridge you have to get across. Why not me? And um, why I say it this way is because I love the fact that your family has opened it. Because they are now giving us an insight how a family can come together, strengthen each other, but also have to prepare for the difficult times ahead. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. We, we want that, to be with you. With that statement that you made, I asked myself to why not me? Mm -hmm. Carl Luton is fairly young. Yes. Yes, yes, I've, I've that, been. That's a beat you know. Yeah, man. <laughs> tell you that I've been, I've been, I've been, yes. I've been yes. serving for a long time here on earth. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And it's, it's really a very disturbing one to know the situation that exists. And you wanted to but trade. I, I would <laughs> love to trade. I said that many times. I said, listen, why not? You understand me? Why not me? You understand me? For me to do some things for him that I'm doing now, I, was, I, I wish it was the reverse. Yes, yes. The reverse, because that is what we as parents would love for. We'd love to want to part before our kids. Yes. You understand me? Yes. We, we don't want to be the kid that to be literally taking care of us, but changing yes. whatsoever it yes, needs yes. to do. Yes. You understand me? We want, we want them to do it for us. That's right. In a sermon, yes. oh, so we serve our time and they generate yes. their time. Let me ask you, what, what do you think the impact of Junior's story is likely to have on Jamaica and the different communities that know him and love him? Well, for one, the, the disease itself is an awareness, and, and what it does is to show you that 
although it's rare, it's out there. Because other than Luton, he's, I know, I know Barrington Gaynor was the first case that I've heard, and many years ago that was. And although they had the Ice Bucket channel Challenge, Yes, and the one yeah, is, yes. I, I never even take it in consideration, yes, seriously. Yes, yes. Being that what it is now, and it is being publicized with a figure like him, is a situation that it brought awareness. And what it does too, is give, is give us the sense of appreciation of what people appreciate, what Jamaicans and the wider diaspora really get up and show love for fellow Jamaicans. Yes. Um, you would agree with me that is, barring a miracle, is footballing days are over. Possible. Okay. I want you to quantify for me, if you may, what you think is impact on the footballing world from prep, marvelly, <laughs> other club sides to the international scene. What has been his contribution? Because one of the things I know about you when we met where we met mm -hmm. in the past is that you never shy about your son. Tell me the impact so people can get the sense. Because a lot of people now, uh, you've been off the stage relatively for a little while. Bring, us, bring him back on the stage and give me his impact over his relatively short year. Well, <coughs> he was dynamic. He was a player of explosive speed and give us results. I think he, when you look at, a lot of persons look at Luton growing up in the game of football. I mean, when Luton is on the team, the stadium, people come to look and watch the team itself because at least they will see a good game, a good player. It's not all the time in Shire, no, def definitely. Yeah, sometimes you're in form, and out of form, but at the same time, people have loved to see the way he plays, you understand me? And the youth of today, in a sense, em, you know, a lot of them can emulate him with, 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 with what he have done. Um, I know he have a love and a passion for scoring goal. And not only that, his leadership skill is, is really awesome also, mm -hmm. very, very much. I know he was in, he, he, was, he was spoke about, especially when there was an impasse between the JFF and them, yeah. and when he, he stand up he stand up as a player to say, hey, listen, I'm talking on behalf of these local players. Not for me. Yes. Not really for me. You understand? Because it's not about any money or finance that he was in trying, but it's for the ones who didn't have it. That's right. What are the achievements that you think are worthwhile to tell us about? He has achieved much as he moved up the scale and you watch him. You have seen him from conception, <laughs> well, not really seeing him, but felt it. Um, give us a sense of his achievement. Well, the sense of achievement is to, to one, is to, is to have the love of his, his family that's on, and his friends and apart, you understand me? Instead of himself is what he, he tried to establish in terms of what possession he think of having in terms of, in ter in terms of his home and, uh, and all of that, you know? in believing um, real estate and all of those things, mm -hmm. you know, that he tends to always want to ensure that in, in the market of that, you yes. understand? What about his footballing achievements as you watch His football him? achievement? Well, I tell the truth, in Luton at 19 year old, got his first thing. He went to Helsingborg in, in Sweden. Mm -hmm. And I know his dream was to re reach in the Premier League. In, in the in the Premier League, mm -hmm. it was a day to him. I told him that it's going to happen. It's happened within the six months of his his first thing, and that is something that he, he he had loved to be. Maybe he didn't get the opportunity to shine as much as he is because let England is. Take, let me take you on. Which side him back in the EPL? In the EPL, yeah. Manchester United. Which side you back? Manchester United. Tell you, you bring the boy bad man. That's the ease of tension. Yeah, yeah, no, yes, no. Yes, yes. Um, so he moved up. Is there something that you believe he, he wanted to do that he didn't fulfill? Yeah, um, I think he wanted to give back to the community in terms of the sports. Because um, I know when he came back, and he came back to Overview, he had always wanted to be instrumental into the helping to change the pattern of how the game is played. 
has him have good ideas of how the game supposed to play. Mm -hmm. And I think it was gearing up in itself to impart that knowledge. Mm -hmm. We even talk about having a having a, a little academy in terms of bringing up some young youth with talent. You understand? I mean, that was part of his inspiration we wanted to do. He can still do that, though. Most definitely. <laughs> you know, when when he was at Harvard View and it was and our viewers, he was struggling in the 2016 uh, season when he was we were talking. And I said, hey, listen, to get back your fitness and all of that, let's play locally. It was a mental thing for him, too. Yes, yes. Because um, coming out of, of playing overseas and in a professional outfit overseas, and now the club is, was folded. Mm -hmm. and. Then you have to come back local, you have to prepare yourself mentally. Mm -hmm. So therefore, when he was there and have a view, although he was training and we were there still was struggling, I think I'd ask him, say, listen, what role do you play? He said, Boy Daddy, I want to do much. I want to be a part of it. But do you know what's impeding me? My vocal. Ah, yes. That's when the respiratory side of things. Yeah, he was he, he couldn't be able to express himself openly. I'm going to come straight to you now. You may choose to answer or not to answer. Um, I tell you about my cousin. And the difference between Jamaica and the USA, among the things, is health insurance. The loving care of his wife has its role. But the benefit he gets for having health insurance in the United States is the family has to cope. I hear of a five million gift, but I know that's gonna go in a jiffy. <laughs> With this kind of thing. Is there a way that we, the people, can help? Well, the people have been well, trying. We want to know. I we know. Want to know yes, but he has done a lot for us. We want to help. We are demanding that. I, <laughs> as his wife has said in an earlier interview, anything would be appreciated and by all means for what I've started already I must say thanks already for the initial start but I know it's a it's a far way to go it's just a long same. journey it's a it's a journey because um, these medical expenses are a tremendous more I don't know, like school <laughs> listen, 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 it is, listen. It is. how can we help sir is there a bank account is oh. there is there we want to know how we can help there is a there's a bank account <laughs> there's a bank account that is in the media as it is um and by all means um i mean i may have it on the phone yeah you have it yeah i, man, I yeah, think man, go and first. there's a go, go for it. me a go GoFundMe me account that is on social media. Yeah, no, no, we on TV don't matter. Look it up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this sorry. is a busy section of the program. <laughs> the busy section. Okay. All we go come and run up a mouth and talk the talk and talk the talk. The family has the bill to pay, and um, what's the cost of life? I don't know. <laughs> when, you, when you work out the numbers, you can inform me. But um, you, 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 you give us that account. Let us put it down and um, remind the people of it from time to time. And um, because this is a long battle. It's a long battle. Um, you know, you have it. Yeah, man, come, Brian. Come, Brian. bring the thing, Brian. Oh, Brian, you have it right here, sir. Yeah, man, you bring the thing. This no, is a this, this is a go for me. Now, you, I assume I can't read it without my glasses. All right, <laughs> OK. Um, Click here to support Luton Shelton fly, um, Flights ALS Disease, organized by Luton Shelton, www.gofundme.com. All right, Luton Shelton Flights ALS, make a donation today as Luton Flights ALS. But uh, for those who are not as savvy with, with, with these pretty things now, um, is there a local account? That's the same one. Ah, Luton Shelton, um, National Commercial Bank, it's an Oxford Road branch, and the number, the numbers are 214-233-150. It's Jamaican dollar denomination. That's give you the number again, because we didn't have it to put up graphically for you. But 214-233-150. Oxford Road branch. Give 
till it hurts. And um, I'm sure the family will keep us updated as to what's going on with these things because go but for the grace of God I although you wanted it God never say you for have it Luton Shelton Jr. is being used in a special way I agree with you yeah. he is bringing to the so called third world that this thing is merciless it respects no one and it can happen anywhere. It's not a rich man's disease. <laughs> yes? And it can happen everywhere. I know it's not a rich man's disease. My cousin has it. I'm not rich. <laughs> yes. um, the reason why some people call it a rich man's disease is the cost. It's the cost. Yes, the cost, I hear you. You have to It's the cost to really get up and, 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 yeah. and maintain. Maintain, maintain life. Um, finally, where do you get your hope from? I pray a lot. And by all means, as they say, you get inspiration from God. I am a family person. I love my kids. I love my family. And the family all together in a whole love each other. And when you have that supportive family, there is, you know, what, what, what you can ask for. And that is what I think Luton is really have, you know, and enjoy. When you see him as sick and as, as, it, as he is, Whenever time the family is around, you always see a smiley face. Sparkling the eyes. Sparkling, yes. yes, yes and yes. I can tell you, basically, when we talk about evil to the other point, I can tell you, say, he said, he's, he worries not. Yes. Yeah, he worries not. The only thing he worries about is, is, is what will happen with his kids in the end. Yes, yes. And you now, understand me? That's, that's it. I said, Daddy, honestly, I worried not. Because you believe mostly in destiny. Because it's destined unto man, right? Yes. Yeah, so. He worries not. Just take care of his children. Yeah, man. And he has a family support for that. He has that. So no doubt you look at him and say, that's the least of your worry. Yeah, man. I take Don't. leave. They are leave for, for look out for them in, if I have to. Yes, yes. You yes. understand me? Yes, yes. 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 Next Good one. Thank, you. thank you for your story. Thanks much. And, um, the family is, has been extended. You yeah. have touched the world, and we want to touch you back. Thank you very much. And, um, and I must say one uh, final thing. I want to thank Brian Lewis also. Yes. He's like a friend, a brother, always in my corner. Yes. And as I said, Luton before, if anybody was to get a story like this, it would be him. Yeah. Nobody else first. And here what I'm going to do now. I'm going to move you out to the corner and put you center circle. Okay. Center, sir. Bye. <laughs> All right, thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks you very much. Luton Shelton Sr. Talking about his son. 32 years old and fighting for his life. Until we meet again on Insight, Michael Sharp wishing you a pleasant view.